So today I'm going to walk you through my creative formula uh, for creating art that connects and, and creating art that stands out. So when you're walking through a gallery, when you're walking through an exhibition or a museum, uh, there are certain pieces of art that will make you stop. And the, the ones that make you stop have these four things that, that I'm going to introduce. And this is part of my creative formula that once you go through using your own art that you'll be able to uh, create some great art as well that pass what I call the five second test. Now the five second test is when people are stopped, uh, they're looking at your art, they are starting to connect with the art and if they connect with the art then they're more likely to buy and uh, they're more likely to appreciate your art and, and so forth. And so this is what you, you want to do, you want to follow these uh, four things in help to help you create your art and the four things are you've got to have good content good composition good style and good story so what do I mean by by content so content is animal portraits is portraits is landscape is abstract is fantasy is something unique is something that you haven't seen before so an example of that is when I was in uh, the National Portrait Gallery as, as, a, as a young child We'd, we'd walked through uh, and seen hundreds of paintings and, and none of them really um, stood out to me. The one piece that, that I can remember was a, a man that was uh, in, inside, inside his house and he was looking into the mirror and but the reflection was the reflection uh, of it looked like he was outside. So it was a portrait of, 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 the, of the back of him and you could see his, his reflection but the reflection was outside. And so this was something new, unique. Obviously, um, if you were to take a picture, you couldn't take a picture of that because the reflection's outside and he's inside. And so it caused me to stop and look and, and uh, it, was, it was something that was, was different. To start to create good content, what is a good exercise? It's to start to, to mix and to mash up uh, different content. And so what I mean by that is that rather than just uh, so with, with my painting of, of Out of the Wilderness, rather than just create a, a picture of a, of a tiger, which people would have seen before, uh, so people like tigers, they might have seen it, and, and, and even though it was a hyper-realist piece, they might look at it and think, oh, that's a really nice uh, picture of a tiger. But because I mixed it in with some different elements, I mixed it in with uh, the, the, the forest background, uh, all of a sudden it's, it started to be an, an image that they might not have seen before, that it was, it was something unique. And so that would make people stop and start to connect with, with, the, with the image. And so start to think about mixing, mixing those. So it's similar if, if you've got two different colours, right? So you've got red, uh, red, yellow and blue, the, the primary colours. So you've got three colours there, but if people only paint, paint those three colours, um, you can't create something new. But if you start to mix them, you've got infinite possibility of, of different colors along the, the whole spectrum. So start to mixing in different, uh, different contents will help you to create uh, a piece that stands out. So the second, second thing is, is composition. Now in composition there's, there's a number of different elements that a lot of tutorials will, will go through. So there's a few things that I use I like to use leading lines. Now what leading lines are is they are lines, uh, not physical lines, but you use the trees or you use the petals or you use the sky and to draw people's eyes in from the corners of the piece into the main focal area. That's called leading lines. Um, and it helps to then from the, from the focal area, helps your eye to move across out and, and move around the piece. Another thing is breathing room. So you need to have areas of space where the eye can go to relax and so uh, you're not constantly thinking about um, or, or looking at details and so you need to add some breathing room. There's other uh, principles of composition but one of the main ones that, that I like to use is something called the golden ratio. Now you might have heard the golden ratio in things like the Fibonacci uh, sequence and, and it's, it's in nature all the time but the way to use it in art is you is you want to place areas of interest or significant objects of your painting in the golden ratio. Now, how do you do that? So you, you measure the width or the length, depending on which, uh, what you want to do. So say, say it's a landscape and you want to put the horizon on the golden ratio. You would measure the length of the piece. You would divide that by 1.618. 
and that will give you a, a number where if you put the horizon on on that number it just looks good now so don't ask me why don't ask me why in nature it's like that but it's just doing that math just looks good and so it, going back to the same piece the, the out of the wilderness the the tiger piece if you measure the the, the width and you divide that by 1.618 you'll get a figure which is directly in line with the eye of the tiger and so I did that on purpose and so if it was slightly to the left or slightly to the right then it just the piece just wouldn't work as well as it as it does and then so you've got the leading lines of the back of the tiger and you've got the leading lines of, of the trees as well in that piece so there's, there's different elements of, of good composition so you need, need to make sure that you have a sound composition for for your piece uh, for it to stand out the next thing is style so creating a, a, a unique style sometimes it, it feels uh, harder than than uh, than it needs to be and, and uh, again you can start to mix up uh, some different elements so you can mix up abstract with hyperrealism you can mix up watercolors with 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 charcoal and so there's, there's various different uh, things that you can do to mix up different styles and so it's important that you spend the time and, and the, the background learning different techniques and using those uh, different techniques into into your art. Uh, so my style is 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 charcoal, uh, charcoal hyperrealism. But in part of that style, it's again mixed in with the content that rather than just doing just doing hyperrealist pieces, I developed a style of, of portraits that I call double portraits. Now it's just uh, putting two, showing two different sides of, of the person in doing these two different different portraits. Uh, and that's become part of my style. That's become part of, of something that if someone were to see a double portrait of, that, that can be hung both ways, they would recognize it as, as identifiably mine. So you need to find a style that is, uh, starts to become recognizably yours and, and, and there's, that's common throughout your, uh, your set of, of pieces. And the final thing is story. So using again uh, Out of the Wilderness as an example, the story of the piece is really key. And once people have stopped and they've connected with your piece, that's all very well and they might like it as, as a nice piece. But once I start to tell people the story behind the piece, they say, wow, I like it even more now. And so the, the, that connection is so much stronger. So the story behind the, the Out of the Wilderness piece is that you're showing the the blacks and you've got the on the one side the black you've got the the other side the white and that represents our lives in, in that we uh, the yin and the yang the, it represents how we both have uh, good parts of our lives and we have struggles and we have trials and temptations and the the idea of, of the piece is that as the tiger the tiger uh, is still immersed in that struggle so even though it's it's, it's out of it's come out of that of that darkness uh, you can see there's there's various parts of the tiger that's still in that darkness and and so that represents that you know if you've had the loss, loss of a loved one if you've had mental struggles physical struggles often we we still feel those uh, struggles even though we're we're through those those, those uh, the worst and, and the hardest and the darkest of those times so the, the, it's still immersed in that but the idea of the tiger is that once it's emerged out of the wilderness is that it's facing into the darkness and it's facing into the darkness so that it can look out for those people who are still struggling. Look out for, for those who are in the darkness, maybe even going through the same things that, that we've just experienced. And so that we can lend them our strength and we can help to pull them out of, of that darkness and out of that wilderness. And so that's the story of the piece. And so now you know the story of the pieces. Um, I hope that you can see that, start that the painting, rather than it just being a nice painting of a tiger, it starts to take on new meaning. And so sometimes that story comes after you've painted it. Uh, sometimes you, you get the story before and you can start to, to compile a piece that, that, that has this great, um, this great story. And so it's, it's important though that it has a story and the, and the more you move on through the art, actually that story becomes, becomes more, more vital. And so to recap, to help people to, to stop and connect with the art, you need to have good composition, good content, good style, good story. It's easy to remember CCSS, uh, good comp content, composition, style, story. That will help you to start to create pieces that really stand out and that pass the five second test. Have fun creating.